got an offer at TikTok. Yeah, I got an interview at Facebook. Like, I had an interview at uh, Netflix. Oh, at, like that's fire. I was actually really sad after I uh. did the, the on-site. And then I also got an offer for an iOS engineer role at Snapchat. Compensation is insane. Yeah. Like, people are flying on private jets and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, like I truthfully, in my bones, believe that I didn't get it. I had a lot of other interviews. I negotiated uh, a total compensation of dollars a year. What's up, man? How are we doing, brother? Good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. All right, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. My name is Omayo out of Banjo. I am also a content creator. Uh, I go by Bro Who Codes on all uh, platforms, basically, so look me up. Check it out. Um, currently, I'm a software engineer at Snap. I just got a job. I'll be moving to New York. I'll be close to Numbin. Where'd you go to school? You graduated, you work somewhere. Yeah. What happened and then what you were up to in the middle until you have a new job? Firstly, uh, I went to Vanderbilt uh, University in Nashville, Tennessee, loved it. Um, right after college, or I guess like during senior year, I got an uh, offer to, I didn't get a return offer for my internship, which is really depressing because I was one of the only people that didn't get a return offer. Oh. So imagine that, like all your other friends, and they know about it. It's just a whole fucking thing. Yeah. But um, after I didn't get the return offer, I had to interview again. And then eventually I got an interview at Facebook uh, for an uh, iOS uh, position uh, as a new grad. I was there for two and a half years. And then uh, the layoffs happened, which was just absolutely devastating for me. Really on paper, nothing was terrible, right? I still saved a lot of money. But you know, this is, you know, like we have your dream job and you like worked at this place with all your friends and stuff like that. You sort of build your life around it. And so after I'd say about a couple months, like I started making a lot more content. So I started focusing on that. Reasonable follow-up would be you lost this job. You thought you had you know, it was your dream job. You're kind of lost. You start content. You've been doing content. It's been going well. Yeah. What made you want to go back? I still definitely love coding mm. for sure, uh, and I do like iOS uh, programming for sure. Like my skill set is already built towards that. That's sort of like the boring answer, I guess. Mm. And I'd say just more on like a personal level, I'd say that I had a huge chip on my shoulder mm. a little bit. Um, and I'd say that makes me want to reach for higher heights and like get more responsibility working at whatever company I'm working at. And yeah. Yeah, I'd say those are just a couple things that made me go back. Cool, okay, so switching gears a little bit, just get the timeline correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. When did you start looking for a job? How long did it take? Mm -hmm. And um, let's start with that, like just give a broad timeline. Technically, I got laid off January uh, 13th of 2023. Okay. And so from that period to now, now that I've landed this, uh, my new job, yeah. the first three months, four months, I wasn't really recruiting at all. Yeah. I had some interviews that were lined up that were really good that I was like, okay, I'll rally for it. But I really wasn't like trying to do any prep at all. Yeah. The early, early in 2023, I was working, doing a lot of content. So I was focusing okay. on that. Yeah. Those are the first months of 2023. Yeah. Then I like started interviewing later in 2023. And then now we get to the beginning of 2024. Yeah. And still interviewing. And then now I got a job. So I'd say in total, maybe like eight months of like just okay. actual like been interviewing. I'm sure, you know, public companies, private companies, everyone's a little bit different, but what did the interview process look like? Like for a L4 position, like how many interviews did you have? Yeah, I'd say that the, st the process is quite standard for a lot of the iOS roles. Uh, usually what it's gonna look like is uh, it'll be like some type of tech screen. Companies do them differently, but usually it's some type of, for me, it was some type of domain specific problem. So yeah. for me, it'd be iOS. Yeah. Uh, it'll be like an hour. And then if you pass that, then you move on to an on-site. And that's usually like four to five interviews. Okay. Uh, which is absolutely grueling. Like yeah. it's just so menacing having to sit there for like five hours in one day or over yeah. two days. I'd say that's usually the process at most interviews. It'll be like a balance of like domain specific coding, lead code, if you're like uh, above new grad, then it'll be like system design. Do you have to do any with iOS too? System? Yeah, there's oh. like, yeah, for iOS, there's like iOS specific system wow, design. Wow, I didn't even know that, okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that either when <laughs> yeah. I was interviewing, so. Yeah, okay, got it. How many how many offers did you end up getting? Or how many on-sites and then offers? Yeah, yeah, so I'd say over my entire process, I had about uh, four to five on-sites. Okay. Yeah, they're all at, uh, I don't know if I can like say names. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah if you're comfortable no, saying I'll come, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like Google, Uber, TikTok, Snapchat. Uh, yeah, I was debating whether I should mention it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. So yeah, I'd say like four to five on-sites. So I got an offer at TikTok okay. uh, for an iOS engineer role. And then I also got an offer for an iOS engineer role at Snapchat. It only amounts to maybe like a handful of offers, so. Yeah. You know, you really gotta be persistent. For yeah. sure. And if you're comfortable sharing, what do the offers look like? What yeah. the negotiation process? Where did you end up now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've decided with Snapchat, they do them a little differently, the packages. Okay. So okay. it doesn't really 
just overall, I'd say that partially you have salary, and then the other part you have equity or sure. like RSUs, like yeah. restricted stock units. I negotiated uh, a total compensation of $363,000 a year. Damn. Um, yeah, and that's like partially stock, partially salary. And then for TikTok, they were gonna offer me around like 300K, and they would do like 200 of that being salary, and then the rest would be uh, RSUs. If you're a developer like me, you've definitely used a JetBrains ID at least once in your life. I definitely have. RubyMine at Gusto, Goland at Bolt, and then IntelliJ for all things Java. Well, today I'm excited to partner with JetBrains to announce that Writer, the ultimate IDE for .NET and game development, and WebStorm, the top IDE for JavaScript and TypeScript, are now completely free for non-commercial use. Whether you're learning to code, building personal projects, or even creating content for YouTube, you can now access these powerful tools at no additional cost. Imagine having the full suite of writer features from code analysis, debugging, to integration with popular game engines like Unity, all available to you for your passion projects. And if you're into web development, WebStorm has you covered with its robust set of features designed to help you write, refactor and optimize your code faster than ever. JetBrains is making it easier for developers to learn and grow by offering the same set of features completely for free for personal projects. Whether you're just starting out or honing your skills, now's the perfect time to try out these tools. Start your development journey today using the link in the description. And you're currently in San Francisco, you're moving to New York. Yeah. And so Snap, right. the offer will be in person in New York? Yeah, it'll be in person in New, uh, in New York, four days a week. Um, honestly, I'm stoked to go into the office. I've been sitting in my room for literally yeah. 17 months. And and I want to talk to people, I want to engage. I think that's also going to help with my career. Yeah. And being in a new city, just kind of exploring and meeting new people, I'm yeah. definitely excited for that. Um, we hear about, yeah, you had this on site, you had that system design, but was there uh, any you walked out and you're like, oh my God, yeah. that was so hard, or oh my God, I crushed that. Or like a question you've never seen before, you'd be like, that was really cool. Like, yeah, what was it yeah, like? Yeah, 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 for Especially sure. Especially because I have no idea about iOS. Yeah, no, I have a ton of those experiences. Even with Snap, like, I finished the last interview, and you know how when you finish an interview and it really just sets in that, like, oh wait, I got that wrong or I could have done that better. Yeah. Like, Wait, why did I do that? Yeah. And like I just, just said the wrong answer. Yeah. Even though I like I knew the right answer. I just didn't say the right thing. It's sure. like that's kind of what happened with Snap. And I was actually really sad after I oh. did the the on the on site because like I knew everything that they asked, but yeah. I like the execution could have been better and yeah. I was like, I didn't get it. Like I literally didn't think I got it. Yeah. Like I truthfully in my bones believed I didn't get it. Yeah. So yeah, like it was very surprising to hear that from the recruiter, uh, that especially for the leveling that I got, because uh, I was able to up level as well. So yeah, I'd say that was an experience with Snap. I had a lot of other interviews like um, that really didn't go <laughs> anywhere. Like yeah. Uh, unfortunately, like I had an interview at uh, Netflix. Oh, and, like that's fire. Yeah, Netflix is like they're just known for having like some of the best uh, engineering. Yeah. Uh, teams uh i haven't worked there but that's just what i've heard and sure. also the compensation is insane yeah like, people are flying on private jets and stuff like that yeah. like so anyway i had a, had a their interview process is obviously like pretty eclectic and anyway i had a recruiter with the hiring manager first like oh. before i did anything okay so I was quite intimidating. I was also a lot dumber, and I didn't really know too much about uh, specifics and like the details of iOS programming. Yeah. Um, so like, I had a conversation with the hiring manager, and like looking back, I'm like, like I could have been so much better. Did like, he grill you on like iOS, like deep, deep, deep level? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, well, she really like didn't grill me at all. Like she really, I think she like was purposely vague. Okay. Because like positioned the conversation points. Uh, in a way that made it seem like the the answer could be simple. Yeah. But it was more so testing my understanding of. Uh, so like one of the questions sneaky. is. Yeah, exactly. It's like she's like, well, what do you think about Objective C versus Swift? Like, what do you uh, think? And it's like you know, there's also like a, a ton of details you can go into. But yeah. um, anyway, I didn't do that. So. <laughs> yeah. When I was interviewing in 2020, I feel yeah. like it was like lead code only. Maybe uh, like Stripe was the one company that did like debugging and like practical. Yeah, they like But that. this last cycle. It was a little bit of Lico, but a lot of it was like mm. different. Mm. It was still Lico, but it wasn't like number of islands. It was like design uh, tic-tac-toe. Yeah, or like yeah. uh, imagine playing Connect Four, but actually instead of putting it from the top, you're putting it from the bottom. Like uh, how would you design the class or like design a jigsaw puzzle? It was like, uh -huh. it was kind of like fun. Yeah. And in a way harder because uh -huh. I couldn't just memorize DFS. I had to like really think like, what what is a jigsaw puzzle? Yeah. Did you have any of those cool interviews? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I do know that for system design, yeah. I have gotten some interesting system design questions. Okay. That you, it really forces you to not like memorize questions or even uh, like have a standard approach. Yeah. It, it really tests how well you can work in an ambiguous situation and, sure. and try to uh, like break it apart into actionable steps. I had to add one of those at uh, uh, for TikTok. I okay. can't really go into the details no, yeah, of, of the question. Sure, sure. Uh, underneath, like everything 
works kind of how you would expect it to, but the way it's presented to you, I think really lets the interviewer test yeah. whether the interviewee can discern problems within a, uh, that are presented in an interesting way. Yeah. I know that's really vague, but. No, no, that makes sense, that yeah. makes sense. Uh -huh. Okay, last question I have for you is, it took 17 months, maybe eight of it, you were actually doing it. Yeah. Now you know a lot, you've gone through it. Yeah. Like, you're better at interviewing now than you were eight months ago, and you kind of uh, know how to do stuff. Right. If, if you could give your past self some advice, like what would you do differently, how would you think about it, if this happened to you again? I would say that no matter what you're doing in life, you have to work hard, but you also have to work smart. Mm. And you have to have, you have to work backwards from what you want. Mm. Um, hard work is mostly done to make yourself feel better. Mm. So that if you don't get the thing you want, you're like, okay, at least I worked hard. Right. I, me personally, I don't really care about working hard. I care about actually getting what I want and working the least. I say whatever you're doing, you need to figure out what are the levers that actually give you results. like. For me in the interview process, like in the beginning, I didn't really know anything. Uh, and so now I know a lot about interviewing. Uh, and the way that I got there was really looking at what was being tested, looking at my failures for my interviews and like dissecting them to the core yeah. to figure out what are these interviewers asking for? Because that's what I want. If I pass the interview, then I can get the job. Right. Like, it's not about doing 200 leak code questions. It's sure. not about doing 200 or whatever. It's about actually getting to the core of what is being tested and figuring out where's the gap. Like what is the gap between me acing this and being the best interviewee ever and me not knowing anything. Sure. And I think you need to constantly be optimizing that. And I think the reason why most people lose at whatever they're doing in life is because you can easily waste a ton of time and energy if you're not working smart and figuring out what are the levers that are actually gonna get me the, the win. Yeah, there's actually this very interesting theory uh, someone explained to me where it's like little differences now, maybe like with compound interest, everything like mm. would scale in 50 years, maybe it's like, let's say a million in difference. Mm. Like let's say you're making like 50 grand now, you comp everything. Mm -hmm. It's like a million in difference has not fundamentally changed your life over all those years. Like you're gonna retire about the same. You right. live in the same state. Right. You're not gonna fly private. Like you yeah. know what I mean? It's like the only thing that like it's like stepwise increases. Like uh -huh. zero to hundred k, big difference. Right. Hundred to a million, big difference. Big difference. Million to probably ten million, you're about the same. Mm -hmm. Ten to fifty, and then fifty to like a billion. Yeah. Anything in the middle, like if you're like fifty and you want seventy, like in twenty, like it's gonna be the same life. You yeah, know what I mean? Same life. And I only recently understood that. Like new grad me was like, I want everything, negotiate the highest. And actually, when uh -huh. I took my last offer, I actually didn't take the most money. Uh -huh. I started thinking about like. Does RTO matter to me? Mm -hmm. Like, does one feed me? Like, mm -hmm. how much vacation can I take? Can I work remotely? Can I just go to India for a month? Like, there's other things that mattered more than money. Mm -hmm. And it was like, do I really want 30K more mm -hmm. to not be able to do these other things? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I realized that 30K wasn't as important as those things. Like, if I put a dollar value to those, that was worth like 70 grand. Oh, for sure. And it's like, I, I'd never thought about it like that. It sounds so dumb now. It's like an older person watching this probably like, dude, of course, that's yeah. wisdom. <laughs> but before I was like, 30K more, take it. Like, yeah. why not? Take it, take it, mm -hmm. invest it. 401k mm -hmm. match. It's like all this stuff matters to a level. You need to focus on like what makes you engaged, happy on a daily basis because you only have so much time to live. You know? Yeah. And like if you're always optimizing for stupid things like money and which and money's not bad. But right, like, right. That shouldn't. That's not the end all be all. You know. Yeah. Optimize for life. You know. I agree. Yeah. Dude, that's, those are all the questions I had. Thanks so Sweet. much. Dude, yeah, you're a legend. No. Congrats on all the I offers. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Absolutely.